Hi, I'm Russ from Escape Design Studios, and today I'm going to show you how to make a latex mask. Um, we're going to be using our uh, thug mold. Um, if you happen to see our wrinkle and uh, uh, vein sculpture uh, videos, uh, that would be the, the particular character that we're going to be casting today. Unfortunately, we were unable to make a video of the mold making process, but um, we'll be doing that sometime in the future. Um, so uh, let's get started. Well, I'm, I'm going to let you know what you're going to need for the, pro for the project here. Um, you're obviously going to need a mold, okay? You're going to need several gallons of latex, and I'm going to explain to you why you need several gallons uh, here in a second. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is um, maybe several of these uh, one inch uh, disposable paint brushes. I picked these up at uh, Harbor Freight. They're like $9 for a pack of 36. You might find them cheaper somewhere else. They don't have to be fabulous. Uh, they're going in the trash as soon as you're done using them because you'll never get the latex out of the bristles. So um, consider them gone. This would be one of your waste costs. Okay. You're going to need some sort of ventilation. Uh, latex contains a tremendous amount of ammonia and it's not exactly good for you to be breathing ammonia. I'm not going to be wearing a mask in this particular video for the sake of the video, but this studio is, is just incredibly well ventilated, so I don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, we've got uh, stuff that pulls it out. So um, you need a pair of gloves um, to, uh, to, to start the process. This is mainly just to keep the stuff off your hands. I'm so used to it now, it's, it's uh, hardly necessary. Um, but uh, the gloves can sometimes inhibit it, your ability to, you know, uh, dexterity and stuff when you're trying to uh, clean up particular areas, and I'll explain to that, you know, here in a minute. Um, but uh, but you should probably wear them. I mean, you are dealing with a chemical, and um, you know, so I am suggesting that you wear the ventil some sort of ventilation and wear some sort of protection on your gloves. Speaking of protection, um, aprons. Okay. You should probably wear these if you don't want to destroy your clothes. I always wear garbage clothes into the studio because I know they're going to get trashed. So, um, essentially, um, you know, it doesn't matter how far away you are, the latex will find you and it will stick to your clothes and um, you aren't getting that off. It ain't wiping off. Sometimes you can get lucky enough to peel it off, but for the most part, it's going to get into the fibers and it's going to be there for the rest of your natural life. So your apron, wear your gloves, and wear your mask. So it doesn't matter which part of the mold that you start with, um, essentially you're going to be doing the exact same thing to both molds, uh, both halves of the mold. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to bust open this little bucket of latex. This is what I call my spillover bucket. Uh, <clears throat> It's always good to have a small bucket laying around. We usually have latex delivered to us in barrels, so um, it's uh, um, it's essentially gets transferred into five-gallon buckets, and then we we use it from there. So um, the spillover is usually just from uh, smaller projects and stuff. That, uh... But anyway, you're going to take your brush, you're going to dip it in the latex, and then you're going to kind of paint it on. Um, this is kind of time consuming. Um, I wouldn't say that it's uh, horribly time consuming, but um, at the same time, it's uh, it, it's going to take up a portion of your, your morning or afternoon. So uh, don't rush this. This is uh, this isn't something you want to screw up on. Um, while you're brushing it, you'll see that we have right here the uh, outside of the mold uh, where the two molds press together. Don't get any latex there. If it's still wet and you get it, make sure you wipe it off and get rid of it. Because any space in between, even if it's the most minute space, uh, between these two molds is going to create um, uh, flashing and your mold's not going to fit together completely tight and um, it can even lead to shifting if, depending upon what kind of mold that you have. So um, always, always, always make sure you keep latex off of this particular area. So you're probably wondering why we're painting this stuff in. Well there's a good reason for that. Okay. Um, 
essentially what we're doing is we're taking out any room for error in the mask or at least as much room as we possibly can. Um, if you were to just pour the latex into the mold, um, you're liable to trap air bubbles. Now air bubbles translate into negative space, nothing in that space. The mask itself, when you pull it out, is actually what you consider what you call the positive. There will be these little pits of negative space in your positive. Okay, so um, to prevent that from happening, we take our little brush and we brush in the latex, forcing out any option of air bubbles. There still might be some because unless you pay close attention to what you're doing, you might actually trap an air bubble in there to begin with. Uh, and then it gets sealed in. So always pay close attention to what you're doing. Don't just stab, 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 paint around, stab, all that stuff, you know, so that uh, you can take away any, uh, any of those air, air bubble uh, issues. So essentially, the brush is to get rid of the air bubbles, okay? And to press in more of that detail, okay? All right. Moving on, we are now uh, moving on. Okay, while we're waiting for these first two layers to dry, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mention something uh, that might be a problem with your latex. If you've got some latex that's a little bit older and it seems to be, instead of pouring, it's glopping out. Uh, there are two things that you can do. Um, one, you can use that latex for other things. Um, not so much mask making and pouring, but uh, certainly for the painting in process. Um, or you can use it um, uh, for uh, thicker projects uh, for coating purposes. Um, the other thing is, is you might be able to save that latex and turn it back into a pouring um, <coughs> material if um, you go ahead and pick up some ammonia, okay, you can get this stuff at any grocery store, usually in the cleaning aisle. Um, they've, they've got colored, you know, ammonia. I would suggest getting the clear stuff. And um, you probably just need, at the most, a cap full per gallon to, uh, to loosen that back up again. So you just put your cap full in, you mix it up, and almost immediately it'll start to, uh, to come back to life. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to point out to you in this particular mold, um, in case you have a similar mold, um, is a lot of molds actually stop at the shoulder point and they come across. This one does to a certain extent. When the mold halves fit together, from here to here will be this reservoir that we can fill with latex later. That's why I told, it, I told you that you needed multiple gallons. Because what we're going to do is we're going to fill this cavity with latex. And the reason why we're going to do that is because these seams where the molds are going to actually fit together haven't been painted yet. So um, that's going to seal up these little lines. It's going to give it a chance to suck up just a little bit more uh, latex. And at the same time, um, maybe fill in some areas that uh, didn't quite get hit with the brush for whatever reason. Okay. The part that you need to be concerned about if you have a mold like this is when this thing clamshells, Essentially here, in this area, is going to be uh, vacant of that material. Um, so your fill line is probably going to be right to here, and it's not going to reach up into here. So you want to make sure that you get several more coats in these areas, as well as, as you can see, the back right here. And um, I would put it together at this particular time, but it's not a good idea. I'll show you it again when I'm about to fill it up. You might also want to reinforce it with something. Sometimes we use burlap. That kind of strengthens it, but at the same time, it takes the stretch out of it, so it's more of a rigid part, okay? Um, I mean, not completely rigid, but you get my point. So um, you're going to need something to try to make sure that that doesn't get, uh, that that isn't too thin. Um, that was part of your sculpture. There was a reason why you had it there, so you want to make sure that the mask comes out the way you want it to be moved. Okay? All right. <laughs> 